One of the great tragedies of the recent past is the death of Adobe Flash Player. I mean, come on, that thing was our childhoods. Luckily, there is hope. I am here to save the day. I am going to be making some Flash games in Minecraft, although only one of them today. Today, we're going for the classic game 2048, which actually I think is not technically a Flash game, but we're going to pretend that that's not the case, because if it was, it would defeat the whole point of my video. For anyone who was living under a rock in like 2016 when this game was popular, it's about trying to merge numbers together. You start with twos and merge the twos together into fours and those into eights, all the way until you get up to, well, 2048. So because numbers aren't a thing in Minecraft, instead of 2048, we're going to have purple. You're going to work your way through the rainbow all the way up until you get to purple concrete, I guess. So I'm thinking our board will look something like this, and of course the first thing we're going to have to do is figure out a way to detect essentially which way the player is walking, because that's going to be our primary form of control. Now I think it's possible to do that by checking the position directly, but I don't have time for that. Instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to check what the block above me is, because I built this little structure here so that essentially when I step forward, the block above me is going to be red wool, and if I step backwards, it's green and orange and blue and so forth. That's, there's no so forth. That's it. Okay, I'd give this a 50-50 chance of success. Let's go. Uh, if I go up, nada. Okay, I've just gone ahead and made the necessary changes, I hope. It was just some issues with the numbers. Now you can see if I walk up, it says up. If I go left, it's left. Right is right, and down is down. So that's all good, we just need to make that actually do something. Okay, let's see what we've got here. I'm gonna be honest with you, it's not much, but if we turn this on, you can see we get a new piece at a random location. And with that, we should probably get started on actually difficult stuff, yay. So I feel like the sliding itself isn't that difficult. All we have to do is sort of check which direction the player just input, teleport the armor stands gradually in that direction until they hit either one of these barriers or another thing, and if the thing that they hit matches what they are, just sort of merge with that thing. But the difficult part is sort of keeping track of and detecting when all of the pieces have finished moving. I think probably what I'm going to end up doing is I'm basically going to add a tag to every single armor stand and basically remove that tag once it can't move anymore. So, you know, we're gonna see how that goes. Okay. You know, I've got something. How confident am I? Zero. I am zero confident. But let's summon in two things and make ourselves start playing, right? And if we move, it will only work in the up direction right now. That's so much closer than I thought. Wow. Of course, the merging isn't quite working properly yet, but I think with a little bit of tweaking, we can make that work. Okay, I've summoned in a few more things once again. Let's see if some of those issues are fixed. Um, no. Okay, so I'm gonna spare you guys the details of bug fixing, but the point we're at here with this is where if I press forward, they slide forward, and you'll see they actually collide into each other right now. That's actually good. That's actually what I want. Because what I want is, if they have the same value, I want them to actually move into each other. Then all I have to do is set it up so that they also are basically checking, hey, is the one on top of me the same as me? And if it is, then they like merge and stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then basically set things up for all the other directions as well. Okay, so as you can see, the height of our command block tower here has like tripled. <laughs> That's because I had to just make a lot of duplicate command blocks. A Little bit tedious, but here we are. We can summon in some things. Uh, as you can see, it is already a little bit confused but maybe this is a perfect example for us to see if it's working. Specifically, I want to know if the merging bit is working. So if we get the scoreboard value of this nearest piece, it did not work. Okay, that's cool. Luckily, that bit is more easily fixed than anything else. Mainly, I'm concerned if like the direction bit is actually working. So we might actually just be able to like do this manually and say, okay, they're sliding that way. We can say, slide them that way. Now they're all bunched up, it's okay. So I think for right now, we just have to fix the actual merging bit. So once again, I'm going to spare you the details of all the bug fixing, but at this point, when I place down a block here and keep summoning until eventually we get a duplicate, you can see they merge. And hopefully if I keep placing, oh, that's perfect. You can see it actually won't merge with this one because this one is a higher value than this one. So I think at that point, that just leaves two more things that need to be done. Number one, obviously, right now is just sort of permanently moving forward. That's because I haven't really set up a way for it to sort of end the turn yet and allow you to change directions. 
And the other thing, honestly, which should be even simpler, is I just need to make it change the color of the tile based on what value it has. Let's actually start with the easier of the two, because I think it will make it easier to troubleshoot and whatnot. I think we just need to manually modify the data of the block based on what its score is. It'll be a little bit of a pain, but not too bad. Okay, uh, here we go. We have that set up, just a bunch of these same commands, modifying the data, whatever. Hopefully, right, we summon one, keep summoning. Oh, wow, we got a duplicate. That apparently did not work. Okay, so a few experiments later, and I have determined that actually you cannot change the kind of block that a falling block is after it's already been summoned. This is actually really problematic because it would basically require a complete restructure of our system to make it work. I mean, the real issue with it is that this isn't just a falling block, it's actually a falling block riding on an armor stand because that makes the movement look much better. But just like you can't change the kind of block here, you also can't exactly change the passenger's data of an armor stand after it's already been summoned. So that basically leaves us with no choice but to summon a completely new armor stand. But actually, now that I've given it a bit more thought, it's not going to be too much of an issue to do that. It's going to be a pain, no doubt, but it's going to be doable. So I'm going to do it. <laughs> okay, um, with our command block tower even taller now, let's see if this is working. Uh, there's one thing. Oh, wow, we got the same lane again. Did that work? It did not work, unfortunately. Not quite. Uh, I thought it did, but unfortunately the old sort of display block still exists. And it shouldn't be that too big of a deal to fix. That's not English, but we'll do it. Ah, that seems to have been right. I'm glad I was recording there, because it, it's doing it. Um, it's, you know, maybe it's not quite as perfect looking as I would like it to be, but... Honestly, it's not too far off. I think at this point, we just basically have to set up like an end of turn type dealio. Actually, this is really satisfying just doing this. Okay, for this part, I'm going to have our little sidebar set up with the scoreboard so that hopefully we can see what's going on a bit better. Already, we maybe have run into a problem, but if we run that first command once, we can say try moving it down. Another one spawns in, that's good. I'm gonna go into F1. Oh, now we can't see the sidebar, but that's fine. Actually, this is, uh, breaking. Oh, goodness. Oh, man, we were so close. Um, but it is, it is very clearly not actually functioning at, at the moment. Oh, and, um, yeah, this is not good. I can apparently just navigate these things outside the bounds of the walls by, this is like, 2048 like I don't know race car edition or something there's some kind of joke there but I can't quite figure it out well okay though these seem like probably fixable issues I just need to you know fix them okay I might have been able to fix the race car effect here yes now if I sort of start moving in one direction and try to go in another it won't let me until everything stops moving but for whatever reason the other issue we were having still remains so after a bit more experimentation, I have determined that there are two issues. Issue number one is that for whatever reason, sometimes the display blocks will choose not to get killed when they should. Issue number two is that for whatever reason, sometimes a block will get stuck thinking that it's moving when it actually isn't. So like right now, the block in the top right thinks that it's moving, but fun fact, it is not moving, it should be completely still, and it's also, you know, not moving. So, you know, I guess something just kind of got broken there, and I need to figure out what it is so that it can be not broken. I may have figured out the source of so many of my issues. Oh my god, it's a marker armor stand. I thought that the display falling block would be half a block higher than the armor stand, because that's how it works a lot of the time. Um, but actually, this is a marker armor stand, so that could explain one of the problems, definitely. It's not clear what the other problem is, but maybe this will work. And yeah, with that, we're already seeing some pretty dramatic improvements here. Ah, but here, here, okay, so the other issue still persists. As you can see, that one guy over here with the particle effect thinks he's moving, but it's not. 
But nonetheless, this is good. This is big progress. Okay, well, I fixed the issue, but I think I had forgotten to be recording when that was going on. Uh, but that's good, because the recording was really bad. So I have a chance to try again, but as you can see, well, you can't really see it right now, but I assure you, the problem is fixed. I was literally missing a single minus sign from one command block, and that was causing an issue under some very specific circumstances. But hey, here we are, and it seems to be mostly working. And I think after that, I'm just going to wipe the board and play through it real quick. Okay, here we go, popping into F1 to make it actually look good. We're just going to try to get to purple as fast as possible, and if I lose, I'm probably just going to stop, because... I don't... I don't know. Uh, we are getting close to losing, actually. This is bad. I am probably going to lose here. Oh, wait, maybe... Never mind, things are falling into place. And we can make a big blue with cyan. I wonder how much of this I'm going to cut out. I'm guessing it's going to be a lot. Because I'm just sitting here like, here we go. Oh wait, how did I get a big blue one? What? Well, if that's a bug, I'm not going to complain about it. Because it means that I got a big blue one. Which means we are halfway to getting a purple one. Wow, we... Oh man, alright, we really are, we are getting close to being able to get a purple, I think. I, I don't really know what exactly the plan is here for me. I am not exactly good at this. Um, oh shoot, you know, this really sucks, because, okay, we need to get our green one down to meet up with that other green one, because when we do that, we'll be able to, like, win the game. Um, but unfortunately that's going to be kind of impossible. So instead I think we're going to have our other green one meet up with the green one and wait. I think that's it. We get two cyans, two blues, and we get a purple one. And that's that. So thank you all so much for watching. And uh, however problematic this video was, I will see you soon. Goodbye. <laughs>